Hello and welcome to Kinboshi Sumo, an outlet where we cover the time-honored art of two large men striking one another in an extremely particular and particularly entertaining fashion. And today is of course an exciting day because we are now one week away from the 2022 Haruba show kicking off in Osaka. So that of course means it's time for a March tournament preview. Who has the best chance to hoist the Emperor's Cup? Who's set up to surprise everyone at the boss show? And of course, who is set to impress or disappoint in fantasy sumo, most importantly. So without further delay, let's get into it! The Yokozuna Terra no Fuji is rightfully the heavy favorite to win the Yu show as per usual, but it isn't as cut and dry as it could have been. The way Terra no Fuji ended 2021, and with the retirement of fellow Yokozuna Hakuho, had all logic pointing toward the big Mongolian sweeping an entire year of Honbashu going into January. And then the tournament actually happened! 11-4 is a spectacular record for almost any Rikishi, but for a Yokozuna, it isn't even in the ballpark. His knees are always the concern, and it looked like he tweaked something in the last five days of January's tournament, but as long as he's healthy, I'd expect nothing less than 13-2 and in a Yusho from Terra no Fuji. That is, unless... Takakeisho pulled out of January's tournament after day four, and sadly, that has been a theme for him in recent memory. Since his last Yusho victory in November of 2020, Takakeisho has failed to finish three of the last seven Basho. However, for the Basho that he has completed, he has gone 10 and 5, 12 and 3, 8 and 7, and 12 and 3, an average of 10.5 wins per Basho. And when he's on, he's absolutely jarring to watch. The force at which this boulder of a man erupts into his opponents in the Tachiai is downright bewildering. He's failed to beat Terra no Fuji in their last two meetings, but until those two losses, he actually had a winning record against the Yokozuna. I, he wasn't a Yokozuna yet, but still. As long as his ankle has fully recovered, there's no one I'd trust more than Takakeisho to upset the Yokozuna and take home the Emperor's Cup. However, Takakeisho isn't the only one who has scored a handful of victories over Terra no Fuji in recent memory. Daesho had a forgettable January with a 7-8 record and a dropout of Sanyaku. However, he had Terra no Fuji on the ropes day one and had at least three other tight matches that could have gone either way. And if they had, we're probably talking about Sekiwake Daesho right now instead of Maegashira 1. Add in the fact that he isn't that far removed from his January championship last year, where he did beat Terra no Fuji, by the way. And the opportunity for him to take on some lower-ranked Maegashira competition, both those factors make Daesho an extremely intriguing pick to shake things up at the top of the table this tournament. But of course, winning a Yusho isn't the only way to earn glory. At least not for us sumo fans, because we have Fantasy Sumo Association! With a week until the tournament, it's time to release the bid totals for March for anyone launching their own Fantasy Sumo Association this Basho. Now, for those of you who are new to Fantasy Sumo, feel free to check out our rules video, but we also thought we'd do a brief breakdown of just a handful of bids that we think are either too high for their Rikishi to overcome, and maybe a few that leave a lot of room for a major point score. At 725, Terra no Fuji is probably at the best price you'll see him on for a while after that disappointing record last tournament and the failure to win the Yu Show. So if you do want to pick him, this might be a tournament to do so. But the man who did take home the Emperor's Cup instead of Terra no Fuji, Mitake Umi, faces an almost impossible climb to break even in March with a 500 bid. He needs to win a special prize or the Yu Show to have any chance of turning a profit, and with the inconsistency he's shown throughout his career, that seems a little too risky of a proposition for my taste. On the other side of the bid pricing coin, there are a pair of Rikishi who really stand out as underpriced. The first is admittedly the riskier of the two, but Shimano Umi has a bid of 150, which means he's predicted to finish the Basho with 6 wins. However, the last time he fought at Maegashira 10 this low, he's been competing higher than that lately. He actually went 9-6, which would have left him with 275 points in Fantasy Sumo and a profit of 125. It's not all about flashy prize-winning Rikishi in Fantasy Sumo, and if you can get a rank and filer like Shimano Umi to turn a profit of 125, you're definitely doing something right and probably gonna have a good tournament yourself. And speaking of unglamorous real-world performances still turning results in Fantasy Sumo, Kotokuzan's bid of 100 for an expected win total of 4 victories seems criminally low. Admittedly, he's completely untested at Makuuchi, but at 100 points, he seems like an extreme low-risk, high-reward pickup for any Fantasy Oyakata to fill out the last one or two slots in their Heia. Of course, the fun of Fantasy Sumo is building your stable yourself, and stocking it full of wrestlers you love to root for and think can and will succeed. If you're playing in a Fantasy Sumo Association this Basho, or just want to follow along and play with us as a channel, we'd love to see your six Rikishi stables in the comments down below, along with who you think will win the Basho, or who will at least be challenging Terra no Fuji for the cup. But until next Sunday, all we can do is agonize over our fantasy squads, so until then, 
Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll talk to you again soon.